Welcome people. In this video, let us look at uh, nervous system pathology. Okay. So nervous system basically has central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. So we will look at both the pathologies. Central nervous system pathology and peripheral nervous system pathology. Understanding that you know anatomy, you know what central nervous system is, you know what peripheral nervous system is, then only please proceed. Okay. Now central nervous system <clears throat> in that there are uh, these headings, developmental anomalies and hydrocephalus, okay, developmental anomalies and hydrocephalus, infections of central nervous system, then cerebrovascular diseases, then miscellaneous diseases like demyelination etc. So we will look at all of these. Then there are tumors of central nervous system. So we have to look at all these guys. So what are the topics we will see under central nervous system? Developmental anomalies, anomalies, anomalies and hydrocephalus, infections, cerebrovascular diseases, miscellaneous tumors. See, what and all you already know, tumors definitely it will be there you know, infections definitely will be there. Developmental anomalies of course then Cerebrovascular diseases, okay, some vascular diseases will be there, that also you can know. So, vascular diseases and miscellaneous diseases, okay. So, uh, these are the topics under central nervous system. Under peripheral nervous system, we have uh, reactions to injury, pathologic reactions to injury, peripheral neuropathy, like how you will see peripheral neuropathy in diabetes, mellitus, etc. Then nerve sheath, again tumors of peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system has not been asked in the exam actually. Mainly they have focused on the central nervous system. So just look at central nervous system, what and all has been asked in the exam. We will come to the, uh, we will tell you specifically at those points. See first of all, central nervous system, you should know the developmental anomalies and hydrocephalus, just the names, okay. Then uh, infections of uh, central nervous system, you should know meningitis for the exam. Exam they have asked meningitis, very important, meningitis you should know. Uh, they can also give it as brain abscess, okay. Then uh, coming to the other things important, subarachnoid hemorrhage is important, okay. Subarachnoid hemorrhage important for exam. Tumors of uh, central nervous system, some tumors are important like uh, glioma, astrocytoma, medulloblastoma, meningioma, schwannoma. It's also called as neurilemoma. These are important for the exam. Okay. What was marked in green important for exam. <clears throat> Let us uh, just look at the headings and then go into the details of important ones. Developmental anomalies and hydrocephalus. You should know spina bifida. This one is representing spina bifida. What exactly is spina bifida? Spina bifida is actually the incomplete closure of one or more vertebral arches, okay, uh, commonly in the lumbosacral region. Incomplete embryologic closure of the vertebral arches is uh, associated with the herniation of the meninges or the spinal cord or both. So the meninges if they come out, it will become meningocele. If the spinal cord comes out, it will be myel myelocele. If both of them come out, that is the meninges and the spinal cord, then it will be called as meningomyelocele. Okay. So that is spina bifida, guys. <clears throat> then uh, what is this? Syringomyelia. Syringomyelia. Okay. Syringomyelia or syringobulbia. This diagram representing that. Is the development of a syrinx or tubular cavity in the spinal cord and medulla respectively. So there is a tubular cavity, fluid filled cyst they are saying here. It is called as a syrinx. Okay. Good. Then look at this uh, next one. Arnold Chai, Chai Ari, Chiari malformations. Arnold Chiari malformation. This is the diagram for that. Arnold Chiari malformation. See, Arnold Chiari malformation is a group of malformations of the brain. Okay, obviously, we are talking about the brain. It involves the 
a malformation of the cerebellum and the brain stem. Can you see here? This malformation of the cerebellum. Yes, this is Arnold Chiari malformation. Okay. Coming to hydrocephalus. What is hydrocephalus, guys? Hydrocephalus is increased volume of the CSF. The CSF volume has increased in within the skull. So there is dilatation, dilatation of the ventricles. You can see here the ventricles have dilated. Okay, there are two types, primary and secondary hydrocephalus. Primary hydrocephalus is the increase in the volume of CSF within the skull along with elevated intracranial pressure. Okay, this uh, may be communicating type or non-communicating type. In secondary hydrocephalus, what happens is there is a compensatory increase of cerebrospinal fluid due to loss of neural tissue. So here the in secondary hydrocephalus, the normal pressure will be there. But in primary hydrocephalus, there will be increased intracranial pressure. Okay. So primary and secondary two types are there. In primary, there is increased intracranial pressure. In secondary, the normal intra cranial pressure but in both you should know the volume of CSF will be more okay that is hydrocephalus so developmental anom anomalies have been uh, we have completed so in the next we have to look at the infections of cent uh, central nervous system that is meningitis encephalitis all of them in this in that meningitis important because they have asked uh, this meningitis in the exam. So we'll do one thing in the next video. We will continue with the infections of central nervous system. Just the introduction. Okay. Come back. See you. Bye-bye.